In the grand scheme of things, the roster in Mario Kart 8 shouldn't really matter that much. I mean, you could have just three characters and still have access to pretty much every single gameplay style this thing has to offer. But when I saw that Mario Kart 8 was getting an updated port for the Nintendo Switch, and King Boo was there, well, this video exists, so you could guess that I was pretty ecstatic. But before I get started, here are some ground rules. These are in no particular order, these characters can never have been playable in a Mario Kart game before, and I'm not doing any crossovers. Yeah, is that it? Okay, that's it, let's go. So I assume you saw the thumbnail, right? So we're on the same page here? Okay, number 10 is an Elvis Goomba from Hotel Mario. Oh, I mean Captain Toad. He started off as a side character in Mario Galaxy and has slowly been rising through the ranks in the Mario hierarchy, and now he's got his own game. And you gotta keep in mind that in that game you can tame dragons and beat the crap out of a giant bird. Make him swappable with Treasure Tracker Toadette and I'm sold. While Captain Toad is more relevant than ever, poor Toadsworth has slowly been fading out of existence as we know it. His last appearance was like, what, three years ago? And he was missing another four years before that. The guy deserves another chance to shine. The best he could ever get in Mario Kart was being a chauffeur in Double Dash's award ceremony. But hey, he's in a car, so that's something. This next one has been pretty highly requested as far as I can tell. And hey, it's another old person. Professor E. Gad has been a fan favorite character for quite a while, and his inclusion in Mario Kart would be a no-brainer. I mean, Luigi's Mansion has shown up in one form or another like four times over the course of the series. And to top it all off, King Boo is being added to the roster. And this is simple math, people, seriously. Speaking of King Boo, he doesn't actually have a monopoly on spherical royalty in the Mushroom Kingdom. The other circular suzerain. That wasn't a stretch, but it's a King bob -omb. yay! He has a magnificent mustache, you can throw him off a cliff, he has weird elf shoes. He's basically everything you'd want in a leader. So remember Mario Tennis Ultra Smash? Oh, who am I kidding? I bet everyone's already forgotten it. And for good reason. It's absolutely terrible. But it did get one thing right, and that's add a Sprixie Princess to the roster. But I propose they should go one step beyond just having the green princess, and add all of them. My favorite is the red one. Look how cappy she is, I could just pinch her chubby cheeks. But that would probably put me on a watch list somewhere, so I won't. We interrupt this video for a rule-breaking segment I call, Jesus Christ, bring back PD Piranha already! Remember that period after Super Mario Sunshine where Petey Piranha was playable in like all the spin-offs? Whether it was baseball, golf, tennis, soccer, and yes, even Mario Kart. He was always there, and I kinda grew to love the guy. His giant bulbous head, clumsy movements, polka dot underwear, and surprisingly chill taste in reggae music are just so endearing. Honestly, he's my favorite character to play in every game he's in, so I can only hope that he'll return at some point. Please. So Super Mario Maker has been immensely popular and influential, but is there really a new character you could use from that game? Actually, yes. Mary O got her start in Mario Maker's manual as the game's guide, but slowly grew to more and more prominence over time. She's pretty much the game's mascot at this point. You know, besides Mario. Of course, if she ever did make it into Mario Kart, you need to have her pigeon pal Yamamura riding on her shoulder like a pirate or something. He's pretty rad. Ah, Piantas and Nokis, the lovable residents of Isle Delfino. They're really charming and come in all sorts of shapes and colors. I honestly couldn't pick between the two, so consider this entry a tie. As in, this could make a great tie-in for the Mario Sunshine HD remake they better be making. Also, fun fact, Piantas are capable of uprooting an entire tree and using it as a baseball bat. With one arm. I'm just impressed. Okay, so hear me out. Putting baby pink gold peach in the roster would be two things. One, it'd be hilarious. And two, it'd probably be pretty easy. I mean, really. Just copy pink gold peach's texture onto the baby, add a voice filter, and bam, you're done. We already know Nintendo's in on the joke, since they put that statue in Baby Park. One thing's for sure though, people would totally only use her ironically, but that's just part of her charm. 
Alright, the final entrants on this list are actually probably the most iconic, seeing as how they were both introduced in the original Super Mario Brothers. But unlike literally every other character introduced in that game, these guys haven't been playable once. Well, maybe bullet bills haven't been playable, but I don't think those things are alive. I mean, they never blink or talk in games where all the other enemies can talk and whatever. Number 10 goes to Spiny and Buzzy Beetle. These guys have been completely neglected over the years. You can see it in their eyes. One of them's extremely angry all the time, and the other one's probably been possessed by Satan. They both have nearly identical body types, so they could even share a character slot. Come on, just make it happen. I mean, they got a Goomba to play baseball for crying out loud. How is that even possible? Well, magic bat levitating powers aside, that's everyone on my list. But if there's someone you want to see that I didn't mention, please leave a comment down below. And hey, you could also subscribe if you want to. Wink.